Hey YouTube, welcome to part 9 of the log splitter build. In this episode we're going to finish the welding, so we'll be ready to go on the final assembly and the hydraulics in the next episode. Let's get on with it. Now this is the oil filter I have to put on here. In order to mount it, it has a couple of through holes in the top which I don't have bolts to fit. They're probably some metric size which I don't actually stock, so I've got to go to drive and get them. It's going on like that. I've drilled the holes already. And I'm going to weld that bracket onto there. Pipe will come back in through under here for the return plate. And I actually, yeah, pipe will come under there for the return plate and then back in there into the hydraulic tank. I've got to weld that one on there. Now, this bracket's not in the plans because it's very dependent on how you go about designing your hydraulic tank, what you end up using, and whether you use the same oil pools or not that I've got. This is just something really easy to make. All you've got to do is line your holes up with whatever mounting holes you've got on your oil filter, drill them, and then find somewhere to attach it. And this is just a bit of scrap angle I used. Uh, anything will do so long as it'll hold it reasonably still. Now I just did some test fitting, which you should always do before you go ahead and weld something. And I found that because of the angle I mounted this on, and I mounted it on that angle so that it could work for tying down the hydraulic reservoir, but because of that angle, the oil filter was going to foul on this. So I've had to cut a piece out of this to allow this to sit out at an angle, which will allow the oil filter to clear the bottom bars. It's a very long filter. That's prepped, I've checked it, it will fit now. So I'll go ahead and weld that on. Okay, getting this off. I've got a couple of marks here where I want it. Put the tack on it. Before I weld them round, I will do another glass test fit. Mmm. I think it needs more. It should fit where he is, but he's going to be tied up against it. So I'm going to cut it a little bit more, give it some space. Cut that back in a lot more now. So it will fit the way I need it to. Now yeah, another test fit before I finish welding. Confident, but you never know. Yep, that'll work. On the other hand, it might look a bit neater if I just cut the whole thing off and move it all out onto this face. I think it would. I'll do that. When I finish, I decided to cut the entire tail off and I'll put him on like this. One more test fit. It's still not going to be right. I've got to undo it. It's screwing on. Yeah, it's too sure. I don't think it's going to work. Put it undone in first and screw it on. No, it's just shy. Alright, well, closing my fault, I made the job of making this bracket a lot more difficult than it needed to be. Instead of trying to shortcut, I should have just welded the base onto the bracket so I clamp it up properly in the first place and then weld it. And one around the other side just to measure. Yeah, a bit ugly, but given how I had to do it, it's not too bad, I guess. Now I'll let that fill down, stick a bit of paint on him, that one's finished. And I can fix this splitter blade on permanently now. The paint is going to be taking up some of this, and I have to say I'm relying on the hydraulic ram being strong enough to scrape the excess paint away. And I'll put a little bit of grease on it to stop any rust getting through. Now that I've got that splitter blade all firmly attached in place or permanently there, I've given it a bit of a quick coat of John Deere green, same as everything else I've built, except for the tractor front end loader which got the tractor blues close to the colour of the Mitsubishi tractor, and of course the gravel grader which got the same, but anyway. John Deere green for just about everything else, as is this. Now, I'm going to leave it here because I want to go and buy all my hydraulic fittings next so I can set up roughly where my hose runs are going to go before I put the control on. I've got everything else where I want it, I think, but I'm just not 100% sure of the control, so I want to do my hose runs before I put that on. Next thing to do is to mount this adapter on the motor. 
I gave her a coat of uh, black zinc. It looks decidedly dark grey, but nevertheless, that's what we've done. Um, oh, before I do that, I've got these bolts here. Now, the bolts that fit into the motor are 8mm, a metric size, a 1.25mm pitch, and 25mm long. I'll just grab some split washers for them to make sure that they don't come off. Now this is the piece that goes on to the pump, or fits in with the piece on the pump. The cut out here, we'll put down on the bottom so that any rubbish that gets in there just falls out. Now this piece is already keyed on and screwed down tight because the hole in this end is too small to get this all through. So what I've got to do is speed the other piece up in there and then put the pump on outside and then use this cut out to tighten the other piece on. It'll become obvious once I do it. A quarter of a millimetre out of alignment. I have to ease these holes a little bit so I've got a bit of room to move. Right, try again. I just eased them a couple of drill sizes up. See if that's enough to get them lined up. So far, so good. Yep, that's plenty. Just looking at that, I think maybe I need to put the other piece on. I think I better put that other piece on before I do this up because it might not fit otherwise. Well, here's another lesson I can pass on. I had to take that off again because I couldn't fit this other piece on with it in place. The thing to do then is to fit them together like that. This one, make sure I've got plenty of room, yes. At least I measured it right when I did it. This is only an alloy block, so you've got to be careful not to tighten them up too tight, so we don't want to strip the thread out of it, that's for sure. Just snug it up till the spring wash is compressed fully. Could be plenty. Ah, dear. I forgot. I've got to put the pump on first, because I'm relying on being able to get into it to tighten those bolts up. Ah, uh, more haste, less speed. Shop was shut when I went there to get the hydraulics, which I was going to fix up today. So I thought I'd do this instead, just to keep the job moving, forgetting that there was a reason I had to do the hydraulics first. Well, never mind, I'll take it off when I get the hydraulics. Now, I took this housing off here, bolted the pump on first, and then bolted the housing back on. That's not the important part. Putting eight bolts in, pretty easy. Anyone can do it. I will get the video on and show you I haven't uh, hooked up the camming pieces yet so once I, when I do that I've got to tip it up so we can try and see inside it. I'll get the video down and show you what happens to hook that up. Right at the moment I am going to weld this on here to make a bracket for the hydraulic control. Now I'll hold it in place, put it in paint, and then I can bolt the control on. I hope this is pretty much the last of the painting, and if not, I'll have to buy another tin. At least the last of the painting with the green. I do have some other painting to do, but that will be yellow. Well, thanks for taking the time to watch this episode. As I said at the beginning, next episode will be on the final assembly and the hydraulic hopefully. There's plans available for this on my website if you'd like to download them. Just bear in mind that I'm not an engineer. These plans have worked for me, but I provide them for educational purposes only. I make no warranty whatsoever that it will be safe for you to build a machine derived from these plans. As I said, educational purposes only. Use them at your own discretion. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time.